This is a quick tutorial on how to use standard hobby servos like this with an Arduino. A servo is nothing but a motor that's been geared down significantly, that's been attached to an arm that turns like this at a set rotation angle. What's special about them though is that they know exactly what position the arm is at and will constantly correct itself until it reaches that position. Uh, servos like this cost around $15 or so. There are a couple of good companies. This is by Futaba. Another one is Hitech. And you can also get smaller ones like this from eBay for around two, two or three dollars. These apparently weigh nine grams and work fine for smaller projects. The servo needs to have three connections: power, which is the red wire, ground, the black wire, and signal, which is usually a yellow or white wire. Power is usually six volts if you're using AA batteries. If you're using lithium polymer batteries, don't use more than two cells, which is 7.4 volts, uh, because any more might fry the servo. The signal pin should be connected to the microcontroller, and, and it'll receive five volt pulses telling the servo what to do. This is the cable from the smaller servo. Notice how the signal cable is white instead of yellow. Also, animals like cats love to bite small wires like this, so don't leave them lying around or you'll basically have a piece of junk. The circuit for this is really simple. We only need to use one output pin for the Arduino, which is going to be pin 9. So, 8, 9. There. And plug that in. You can plug it straight into the servo uh, connector. Uh, a bit tricky. And, um, yeah, you want to use an external power supply. Don't power it off uh, USB. You might be able to get away with it with a smaller servo, but with a bigger one like that, I wouldn't recommend it. You might blow the USB. So, we plug this in to row 5. And ground, um, we'll just put it into row 10. And, again... Use this to plug it in right into the header. Remember, the middle pin is uh, power. Uh, I think that's standard for all servos, not just uh, Futaba servos. And there it is. Using um, six volts as power and now let's get on to coding and write something to get it to work. The first thing we need to do is include the Arduino servo library. So we'll go under sketch, import library, servo. Then we want to create a servo object. So servo, we'll call it my servo and we go to the setup section of the code and we have to attach it to a pin, so my servo dot attach and uh, that's pin 9, so we connect it to, it's a PWM pin and in the loop we're gonna first uh, write, write it to go to center so my servo dot write microseconds 1500 which is 1 1.5 milliseconds and create delay of a second we do this again to make it go all the way left which if you remember is 1 millisecond or 1000 microseconds and uh, I've got the delay and finally we'll do this for to make it go right which is 2,000 microseconds. And we'll check that we have no errors. Yep, so let's program it and see what happens. So I put a little marking on the servo arm so you can actually tell where the center is. And when we plug it in, let's see what happens. So it's going to the center fine, but it's not going all the way left or all the way right. 
In fact, it can go much further than that. The problem here um, is that a lot of servos don't work right off the bat at the values of 1000 and 2000 microseconds. You have to um, give it slightly different pulses. Uh, it varies with each servo. So, for this, I'm going to guess maybe a 1000, sorry, oh, an 800 millisecond pulse to make it go full left, and maybe a 2200 millisecond pulse to make it go right. So let's adjust those values in the code and try it again. So with the new values, you can see it's still centering fine, because we haven't changed that value. And it's going almost to full left, but um, the right still seems a bit dodgy. So let's change the values a little bit more, uh, maybe 700 to make it go full left, and 2400 to make it go right, and see what happens. With those values that we tried, uh, we can see that the servo is working almost perfectly. So, whenever you get a new servo, it's always good to test it out and write down those values. Um, most servos work pretty close. This one seems to be particularly bad, actually. Um, but, yeah, every time you get a new servo and want to use it, make sure you test it out with some code and actually note down those values. One thing I wanted to do was measure the current draw of the servo. So to do that, we need to take out um, take out some wires and create a break in the circuit, and um, make the multimeter go in series. So let's do that. And we'll turn this on to amps setting DC amps and um, plug it in put the backlight on and let's try this out uh, what's useful about these jumper wires is that they have little exposed contacts so you can probe it with a multimeter oh, it's not working because we didn't put it in the right row there we go So you can see it's not drawing all too much current actually, only about uh, two, 0 0.2 amps at the most around, or 0 0.224 actually. So a useful thing to do is you can um, set the min uh, max value, so over here it's reading the max value, and it will hold that. So let's focus, there we go, and probe it. So you can see uh, the max value it's read is 0 0.264 amps. Uh, of course, that's going to change if you um, if you hold the servo down like this or make it work harder. So there you have it. That's how to interface uh, a servo with an Arduino. One other cool thing you can do with servos is that you can modify them to use them as wheels for like robotics. Um, it takes a bit of hard work and sometimes you can't go back to using it as a normal servo but uh, this can be a cheap alternative to buying a motor driver and a regular uh, DC motor. Um, here's a video that of uh, a project of mine that had um, three servos, two as wheels and one as a scanning servo. I've ripped it apart now but you can see uh, that you can actually buy wheels that fit directly onto the servo and I've modified this so you can see that it's not, uh, I've cut out the gear stopper so you can actually move it 360 degrees and more.